We will find the ghost hunter, William, before she finds me. Before she finds you. And that's a solemn promise. Something big is brewing round here. Ghosts are flocking to the area. But whatever it is, my compass will lead us straight to the heart of it. Providing the one ghost who knows of my existence, the one ghost who knows of my powers, doesn't get to warn the others. You mean... The shoeshine boy. Yeah. The shoeshine boy. Tess, where are you? I was in the van, and he drove off to sniff. I'm at his place. Hello? I think the battery's going. Listen, it's a caravan. Tess! You don't get scared being left on your own, do you, dearie? Because we've got to go out. In fact, we're going to pay a visit to your house to collect your little ghost friend. You'll never get him. Adam, no? Nearly, nearly. I suppose that's good enough for you, isn't it? You whip. He was just within my grasp, barely a yard away. Oh, how I hate and despise ghosts. Do you hear me to sniff? I loathe and detest them. You see what I can do to them. I won't be happy until I've bottled every last one in the universe. And the shoeshine boy was on the top of my list. It wasn't my fault. Shut up! Mum will just smart those kids. The police are here. We've got to pack up and get out. Well, you shouldn't have left it in the van. Shut up and get packing. I was just a driver. That was close. Too close. Blimey, I thought we were done for. You okay, Tess? They didn't hurt you? No, I'm okay. All those ghosts in all those jars. Please don't worry, William. We'll get them out, I promise. Did you find out anything? Why is she doing all this? I don't know. They were getting jars ready. Loads and loads of them. For ghosts. Mrs. Croker kept on about a solstice or something. A solstice? What's that then? I don't know. But I've heard it before, somewhere. I remember. Mum was talking about it to Dad. You know, that article she's writing. Mum? Hmm? What's a solstice? A solstice is like a poultice, only hotter. What would you do with my coffee table? No, love, just loading up the van for tomorrow. The solstice, Mum? Right, well, solstice comes from the Latin word solstitium, which means that the sun, sol, is standing still. Stitium. A bit like your dad when it comes to my coffee table. So what's it do then, Mum, this solstice? Well, in ancient days, it was a time for magic, celebration, um, which is what you find out when you read my article. And the summer solstice is the longest day of the year. It's when the sun's at its highest, at its zenith. And when is it? June 21st, Midsummer's Day. Tomorrow. Tomorrow! Look, why don't we call the police? 
Tell them where Mrs. Croker's hideout is. We know they'll be looking for her after what she did to Mrs. Humphreys. Then she'll be safely out of the way. What about all them ghosts? The bottled ones? What would the coppers do to them? William's right. I mean, we can't just say, arrest Croker, but be careful of all those jars, because they've got frozen ghosts in them. We're going to have to go back there and take those ghosts somewhere safe. And we're going to have to do it as soon as we can. Tomorrow. I can't. I'm going on this trip to Chilwood Castle tomorrow. All right, then. I'll do it. I've got a study day tomorrow. No, Tess. You got caught last time. And I'm not going to be around tomorrow to get you out if it happens again. It won't. I won't let them catch me again. They might. Tess, please promise me you won't go anywhere near Crocus Hideout until I get back. It's too dangerous. Okay. Now, no messing about when we get to this castle. Don't worry, I'll be as good as gold. Um, Roddy Oliver, would you like to join us? Sorry, Mr. Witt, just coming. Um, come on, Wally. Chilwood's waited six centuries for you. Can't wait any longer. <coughs> now, I'm afraid Mrs. Justin won't be coming today after all. So Hang on a minute, Mr. Witt. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's nice, isn't it? I'll give up my day off, and you nearly go without me. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> so Mr. Harding has agreed to step in and help us out at very short notice. Oh, yes. Now settle down, everybody. Let's have a nice, quiet, and well-behaved journey. Right, off we go. Yo! I don't see why we need to do all this. I'd have thought the police would be here by now if they was coming. Oh, they'll be here all right. Well, I can't see it. Once the kids start talking about bottled ghosts... They won't be talking about bottled ghosts, you moron. They'll be talking about the woman who locked up Mrs. Humphreys. That's who the police are looking for, me. Now, get this lot in the van. Where are we going to put the ghosts? We'll sort that out after tonight. We're going to need somewhere big. Yeah? Very big, because tonight... We're going on the biggest ghost hunt there ever was. Yeah? How big's that then? Bigger than your tiny brain can ever imagine. Tonight, we're going to eradicate every ghost in this country forever. about a bit, Mr. Witt, doesn't it, eh? It's a bit like being on a boat, isn't it? It's <laughs> awful. Um, reminds me of when I was in the Navy. Bloke I knew, he couldn't stand all that rolling around and swaying around either. Oh, <laughs> I remember one day we had a, we had a whopping great plate full of liver and onions. A plate the size of a dustbin, then it was. <laughs> and this bloke died whooping it down like a, like a wallowing pig. <laughs> and then, with the movement and the swaying and the rolling of the boat, he went as green as a cucumber. <laughs> really green. <laughs> then, then he puked it all up over the deck. <laughs> we was, we was stepping and sliding. He chewed up bits of liver and onions. Ankle deep in it we was. <laughs> We haven't got time for you to wipe your snivelling nose. Oh, sorry, Mrs. Croker. Just got a bit of a drip. It's worse when I'm in a hurry. Pack it all in, the Smith. Fast. We've got work to do. Yes, boss. Right, boss. Three bags full, boss. <laughs> Mr. Witt, <laughs> but it's certainly coming out of him now, isn't it? <laughs> Oi! Shut up! I'm 
I've heard that people go missing in this castle. Missing without a trace. Just what we could do with that in the summer. You lot, give it. Ready, Mr. Harding? Um, I think we can let them off now, please. Uh, right, Mr. Witt. I've just given them a bit of uh, background information. Casper, it's for you. Who is it? Casper. I've got so much to catch up on. I'm sorry. Tess, what's the matter with you? We always used to do stuff together. Now it's like you're avoiding me. I'm not avoiding you. I'm busy studying. No, there isn't. Look, I told you yesterday, there isn't. I'm just busy. Once the exams are over. Yes. OK, bye. Everything all right, love? Yes, fine. My group, follow me. Mr. Harding, perhaps you could start at the gatehouse. Suit me, Mr. Whit. Right, my lord. Quick, march. Up, two, three, four. Up, two, three, four. Up. Just style up to get off. Nosy. Mum, I need a break. Mm, all right, love. You know what it's like when you're having to concentrate really hard? See you later. Right, now, here we have the portcullis. Oi, bell up or else. I wasn't talking. Listen, I'm in charge here, so you shut your horrible little cake hole. Now then, the portcullis, as you can see, has got lots of horrible big spikes on it. And what used to happen was, if anybody turned up at a castle that the souls didn't want to let in, they'd drop it on them. Boof! They squelch them out in half and the dust must be underneath it. Brilliant! Yeah! Oi, Ronnie, move over a bit. Oi! Oliver! Pack it in! You're just the sort that'd drop this on! Mm -hmm. 